All right, guys, so conservative Twitter went crazy last night. And the reason why is because a lot of people, like myself, were patiently and eagerly waiting for President Trump to release uh, the final list of those who he's going to use his presidential pardon powers to commute their sentences. And there was a lot of speculation about who he was going to pardon uh, going up into this thing. Obviously, I did a video on this. Uh, based off uh, an article from Bloomberg, which some of you guys gave me some uh, ish for uh, <laughs> because I use Bloomberg. Uh, but it turns out that, you know, Bloomberg was kind of on the money uh, in regards to the speculation in terms of who he would pardon. I always trust news that covers finance. If people are making money off the news, <laughs> I'm going with that. But anyways, so when President Trump finally released his pardon list, a lot of people was happy and a lot of people were upset, of course, right? A lot of people were happy because uh president trump had uh pardoned some uh celebrities like lil wayne kodak black particularly black twitter i would say was um very happy about that right because they love kodak you know uh wayne uh you know they have a love hate relationship with wayne i think because of him coming out and supporting president trump and by the way i mean <laughs> for all those uh super woke revolutionaries on black twitter who call president trump a white supremacist like uh jamel hill um him pardoning kodak and wayne i mean like is this white supremacist behavior i mean because if it is then he is the worst white supremacist i've ever seen in my life plus all the other non-violent drug offenders who happen to be black um that are on this list as well again i mean th this man has been the worst white supremacist ever um in my opinion and then others were not so happy because unfortunately president trump was stuck between a rock and a hard place as uh, did not end up pardoning Julian Assange or Snowden uh, during his final days in office. So there's some conservatives out there that really feel betrayed, that are really upset. Um, I saw a lot of comments on Twitter that suggesting that a lot of people are abandoning the president. They're abandoning the movement. Um, they think the president is a part of the deep state. Um, they think, you know, he, he, he failed at taking on the establishment. And I think a lot of those people who feel that way uh, do feel that way for the right reasons, okay? I'm not going to put down their feelings. However, I just want to add a little bit more perspective um, on the situation and to try to explain why uh, the president did not move forward with uh, pardoning um, Snowden and Assange. But before we get into that, my name is Greg Foreman and you're watching a Black Conservative Perspective. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a Black Conservative Perspective, aka a leftist worse nightmare you can also follow me on twitter at g and bcp let's get it all right guys so last night president trump uh granted clemency to about uh 143 people right um some big names on the list uh are stephen bannon right who was a former advisor um and executive and founder of breitbart who trump had granted clemency to uh, due to allegations of wild fraud and money laundering conspiracy charges. Uh, obviously, you know, Steve Bannon is an ally of the president. He also extended this towards, you know, Lil Wayne and Kodak Black, who both were facing their own legal issues. Lil Wayne illegally possessing a firearm um, as he's a felon, and felons can't uh, possess firearms. And then you have Kodak Black, whose real name is uh, Bill K. Dupree, right? If you ever seen Kodak, <laughs> He don't look like a man named Bill, but anyways, Kodak was uh, sentenced to 46 months in prison on federal uh, weapons charges in 2019 uh, after admitting that he falsified information on federal forms uh, to buy for firearms. There's also some other notable names uh, up here that the President Trump has pardoned, but I don't really get want to get too deep in it because it'll make the video too long. But I will say this, there's a lot of criticism in regards to uh, the president pardoning people that they feel were uh, corrupt, right? Like, you know, some people will say Steve Bannon didn't deserve a pardon, right? Um, you know, President Trump had um, pardoned some folks from Blackwater in the last round that, you know, people say committed, you know, war crimes. And a lot of people have been very critical over President Trump's uh, pardons and how he's used them, and they don't think they've used them correctly especially considering the fact that, you know, he didn't pardon Assange and Snowden. Now, my opinion on that is this, man. Like, I think people who criticize the president for pardoning people who they feel are actual criminals that committed fraud, you know, that was laundering money, you know, doing conspiracies, robbing banks, things of that nature. I'm right there with you, right? Like, I 100% agree with you. 
Uh, I don't think it's right. I think, you know, when the president uh, uses his power to help out his political allies, obviously, you know, if we're going to criticize the Democrats for doing that type of stuff, we got to criticize our own guy for doing that type of stuff. So, you know, I'll be the first person to tell you, yeah, I don't necessarily uh, agree with that. However, you got to look at the list as a whole. It was 143 people. When I actually took a look at the whole list, there were a lot of names up here and people that received pardons who were nonviolent drug offenders. Like, for example, uh, Chris Young. Um, Chris Young was pardoned for his nonviolent drug offense in a conspiracy case and had uh, served 10 years of a sentence. He was, had initially been given life sentence. Uh, Kim Kardashian had been advocating for his release. Okay. Um, you have Caroline Yeats. Uh, the White House has said that Yeats' 20-year sentence has been commuted. She has served almost seven years of it and its first time non-violent drug offender. Okay. So those are just a few names. And there are a lot of people up here who got pardons for, for non-violent drug offenses. And these are people who, people like Kim Kardashian, Alice Johnson, people of that nature who recognize you know, the power of working with the president, allying with the president, even if you don't agree on everything he says, to try to do the right thing. So there's a mix of bad in here, but also a mix of good. There's a lot of people who did not deserve to be in prison, at least not for that long, who were adversely affected by the um, 1980s uh, and 1990s uh, drug and crime bills done by Joe Biden, who President Trump has helped, Okay. So, again, guys, I'm just being consistent on this. I'm acknowledging the good and the bad, right? So should President Trump be uh, <laughs> pardoning war criminals that work for Blackwater? No, obviously not. Should he be pardoning people that are his political allies um, and giving favors to those people? Probably not. However, at the same time, you know, there's a lot of good in this list in terms of the people that, you know, are getting their lives back together. So I can be critical of him for that. But if I'm going to be critical, I'm also going to make sure I'm being consistent in the sense that, okay, yes, there's some, some bad in here, but there's also some good as well. Now, let's talk about the people that he uh, did not pardon. So he didn't pardon his family and he didn't pardon himself. So there was speculation from the Bloomberg uh, article that I had shared with you guys that President Trump may pardon uh, himself and his family to try to protect him. Now, ultimately, it seems like his legal advisors uh, told him not to do it. And the reason why is because if he would have pardoned himself, it would be like admitting guilt. Okay. And, you know, if he really believes he didn't do anything, if he really believes that he's straight, then he probably shouldn't do it because otherwise, you know, that's just going to make it look like he's guilty. Um, it's also going to create a legal battle in the Supreme court. And quite honestly, it could just continue to piss off the establishment and perpetuate the crusade, um, that they currently have going against him. So, you know, I don't necessarily disagree with him doing it. I think he should have did it regardless because I, I got a gut feeling that they're going to screw him regardless of what happens. And I'll get into that later. But I think he should have very least he should have pardoned his family just to be like, you know what? I won't pardon myself, but I'll pardon you guys to make sure that you stay safe. Um, so I think that's something that um, he should have done that he didn't do. However, I can understand why he didn't do it. Um, if his legal advisors told him that, you know, that probably wasn't the best move. I 100% understand it. They definitely know more than I know. So what's also interesting is that, you know, ex-FBI director James Comey had came out and called on Joe Biden to uh, pardon uh, President Trump the same way that uh, Gerald Ford did for Richard Nixon back in 1974 uh, after Watergate. So Joe Biden, you know, potentially could pardon the president. And I think that would be a good move for Joe Biden if he really wants to heal the nation. And I also think that it would be a good move to not only do that, but also to call for an end to this impeachment trial um, that, you know, may be coming up in the Senate. I think those two things, if, if Biden does that, um, I think would be a good uh, move for him to do. But it remains to be seen whether or not he will do that. But as of right now, Trump and his family do not have pardons. Now, Rudy Giuliani also did not get a pardon as well as there are a ton of people that are coming after him, particularly for his role in trying to litigate, overturn the election. So a lot of people believe that Rudy Giuliani could possibly even be disbarred. However, he didn't get a pardon. So 
maybe they're thinking that you know they're gonna be okay one more person before i get to the juicy part here which is joe exotic uh, a lot of people thought that joe exotic may get a pardon um who is the tiger king um he's serving a 22 year uh prison sentence for plotting to kill carol baskin who was his rival uh in the netflix documentary uh the tiger king so he didn't get one and also as everybody is upset about julian Assange didn't get one as well now for all the people that are mad about julian Assange and snowden not getting pardons um i'm 100 percent with you right like i i understand why you're upset however at the same time guys you've seen how the deep state operates okay we've seen how they operate Tucker came out and basically said that McConnell is blackmailing Trump. Uh, basically told Trump that, listen, if you pardon Snowden or Assange, then you're done. We're going to convict you in the Senate and you will never be able to run for president again. And you will have a very limited role moving forward in politics. And guys, keep in mind, I mean, the banks have already pulled out under Trump. OK, social media has censored Trump. It's going to be very hard for President Trump moving forward. Right. Just in terms of just running his business, the Trump organization, it's going to be super hard. So should Trump have basically pushed that final button for the establishment and basically became a martyr? Because he would have been a martyr at that point. Now, if he would have uh, pardoned Assange or Snowden, he would essentially forever be a hero. However, his life would be ruined. And guys, we don't even know what other threats may have been made. We don't know what they may have threatened to do to his family or, you know, other loved ones or associates around here. We don't know exactly what the actual situation is. Now, President Trump, up until this point anyways, I mean, hasn't really expressed that much interest in pardon Assange or Snowden. However, we have seen a lot of people lobby for it. So I'm pretty sure it's one of those things that he did think long and hard about. And the fact that uh, Tucker came out and said that McConnell... Uh, basically try to blackmail him probably means that he was on the verge of doing it probably means that he wanted to do it however i mean considering that the man has basically lost everything right now and you know the only thing that he has left is this impeachment stuff right being able to, to run an office and to still be you know officially uh, eligible to stay in politics that may have been the bridge too far for him at this point Right. Because, again, if he does that and then they end up convicting him, it is over for Trump. Trump becomes essentially irrelevant forever. Now, it remains to be seen if the establishment is going to end up convicting him anyways, which I'm sitting here thinking that they might just end up doing it anyways. Because they know that this is their best way to get rid of Trump and never have to worry about him again. And especially now with the news that President Trump is thinking about starting a third party. Um, they, they may take that as like, okay, yeah, this dude is definitely going to try to run again. You know what? We may just go ahead and convict him. That way we know at least it's not going to be him. Right. And that may be their way of saying, you know what? We're going to make sure that a third party is not going to be viable. Cause again, they've already censored the president. They made it very hard for him to raise money financially. And then if they, uh, vote to convict him in the Senate, then he officially won't be able to run for office. It will make it very, very hard to organize a serious third party effort against the GOP four years from now. So, you know, if Trump is thinking about the long term future, right, if he's thinking about, you know, whatever new third party, whatever new political ambitions he has moving forward in the future, um, maybe pardoning Assange Snowden is not the right move right now. Maybe maybe that move is not worth what may ultimately kill a movement. OK. So I'm just playing devil's advocate here. I personally don't know. Um, I'm just speculating based off, you know, what I've read, what I've seen and in and, and my thought process in terms of what he may have been thinking about, because I know that he definitely thought long and hard about it. It's definitely something he had to been considering, um, considering all the people that were lobbying him to do it. Um, and the only reason he didn't do it, in my opinion, is because of threats from the establishment. So. Let me know what you guys think. Are you guys happy with this parting list? Are you upset? Let me know why. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.